Do you have keepsakes at home that need special care? In this video series, we'll talk about museum preservation methods and how you can incorporate these principles into the home. You may have special garments that represent milestone moments or formal occasions and are wondering how you can ensure their long-term care. Special garments may include wedding dresses, uniforms, ceremonial clothing, cultural regalia, or simply investment pieces. Clothing items are deeply personal articles for many as they serve as an expression of individuality or lifestyle. The featured garments in this video may be similar to items found in your closet. We often keep these special garments in storage indefinitely, but it has become more common for family members to pass these items on to new generations Textiles are among the most fragile of all artifacts in a museum collection as they are easily damaged by mishandling, mold, insects, light, heat, and humidity. We will discuss museum preservation principles which can help you to properly store and care for your textiles while continuing to give them new life at your next special occasion. The methods in this video are not limited to garments and can also be applied to your other textile items, such as heirloom linens, accessories, or handmade quilts. This early 20th century wedding gown was worn by two generations of women, first in 1928 by the donor's mother, and later in 1988 by the donor's daughter, Christine Armstrong. The dress features collar embellishments and a faux belt in silver and white beading. When the dress was worn a second time, it was altered and updated to suit 1980s styles. While wearing an heirloom garment may result in new modifications or extra wear and tear, its history is enriched with the memories of another matrimonial union. Wedding gowns are often made of extremely delicate fabrics and embellishments and are particularly susceptible to physical damage during storage and handling. This Canadian army jacket belonged to George Clifford Harkies, World War II veteran and longtime mission resident. The uniform is made of khaki wool, metal buttons, and felt patches. This type of garment may be better suited for long-term preservation as it marks a significant historical event, but could possibly be worn again for commemorative purposes. We are also featuring this garment because wool and other natural fibers are highly sensitive to damage from sources such as pests, pollutants, and moisture. This early 1970s polyester caftan with a paisley print was sewn by former Mission District school teacher Polly Bitterton. While the caftan has been present in many cultures around the world for centuries, the relaxed fit of this garment became popular with the hippie fashions of the late 60s and 70s. The fabric on this garment is also an example of the bold graphic prints popular at the time. You may decide to preserve memorable pieces such as this from your wardrobe so you can reflect on the fashion trends of your past. You will need the following materials to preserve your garments and you may already have some of these at home. They are garment hangers, which should be made of finished or painted wood. Uncoated and unsealed wood hangers emit harmful gases, which can cause your garments to yellow and deteriorate. Padding made of undyed muslin fabric over polyester batting or acid-free tissue paper. You can purchase ready-made and conservation-approved padded hangers through specialty online retailers. Or, for a less expensive option, you can make your own padding using crumpled up acid-free tissue paper. Rust-proof metal hooks, such as aluminum or chrome. An undyed cotton muslin garment bag. Plastic garment bags are not recommended as they can cause moisture condensation, promoting mold growth in textiles. The plastics used in dry cleaners bags are not conservation approved and can cause yellowing of garments over time. Or, a Tyvek garment bag with a zipper, which is suitable for large garments. Tyvek is a breathable synthetic material which allows for adequate airflow. 
These bags are typically more costly and can be purchased through a specialty retailer. These may be more suitable for your extra special garments. An acid-free and lignin-free garment box, which can be purchased through hobby shops or craft stores. Regular cardboard boxes are not recommended as they contain harmful acids which damage textiles. Select a box that is longer than your garment if possible. Acid-free cardstock or paper, which can be purchased at your local paper supplier or craft store. A polyester mesh screen. You may use a clean and rust-proof aluminum mesh screen as an alternative, but please ensure your screen does not have any frayed edges, which may snag garments. Cotton or nitrile gloves. Vacuum cleaner with hose attachment. A pair of nylon pantyhose. Cotton string. Acid-free tissue from your local paper supplier or craft store. For extremely fragile and delicate garments, look for tissue paper with a softer surface texture. And a pencil. It is highly important that you use the approved materials in this video for long-term preservation of your garments, as certain types of woods, metals, paper, and other materials emit pollutants that cause yellowing and embrittlement of fibers. It is not necessary to use all of the materials in this video, and you may wish to adapt your storage environment to suit your budget or needs. By following the suggestions for environmental controls, you can still slow down the process of deterioration in textiles. Textiles are at a much higher risk for insect infestation and mold growth compared to other items. Mold grows easily on natural fibers such as cotton and linen and creates permanent stains. Dirt and other pollutants can increase attraction of pests and insects which love to feast on materials such as wool, silk, leather, and fur. Insects will also feast on other materials if they are soiled. We want to ensure that garments are free of debris before storing them. In a museum setting, we typically avoid invasive laundering methods, which include washing with harsh detergents or dry cleaning, as they can result in permanent loss or damage. You may wish to consult with professional cleaning service on appropriate methods for heavily soiled items but please be advised that this is a chemical process and is harsh on specialty garments. For the purposes of long-term preservation and care, you will only be covering a gentle surface cleaning of garments. The gentlest method of surface cleaning consists of vacuuming loose dirt and debris through a fine screen. This method will ensure that surface embellishments will not be dislodged during the cleaning process. Before handling your garment, put on gloves to protect the fabric from your skin's natural but harmful oils. If you don't have gloves, wash your hands thoroughly before you begin. First, lay the garment on a flat, clean surface and gently smooth out the fabric with careful, planned movements. Place a mesh screen over the flat laying garment. The screen will help to keep the garment flat while vacuuming and the holes in the screen allow for surface dirt to be removed by the vacuum suction. To prepare your vacuum, ensure there is no dust in the entry to the nozzle. Turn on the vacuum and with your non-dominant hand, hold the screen in place. With your dominant hand, hold the nozzle at least one inch away from the garment. Be extra careful if your garment has any beading or other embellishments, as the vacuum suction could cause these decorations to lift. Slowly move the nozzle over the surface of the entire garment, gently lifting and moving the placement of the screen as needed. Avoid dragging the screen across the garment to prevent snags. If your garment is made of a heavier fabric, such as wool, you may wish to hang the garment on a padded hanger while cleaning. This will help to prevent unnecessary stress on structured elements, such as the shoulders in this World War II jacket. Instead of using a mesh screen while vacuuming, cover the opening of the vacuum nozzle with a pair of nylon pantyhose. Wrap the excess material around the nozzle and secure it with a knot. 
The nylon will ensure that if any pieces dislodge during cleaning, they will not be sucked up by the vacuum. Hold the vacuum at least one inch away from the garment and move the nozzle opening over the entire surface. We will discuss methods for two types of textile storage, hanging and flat laying storage. How you prepare your garments for storage will depend on the weight and materials of each piece, as well as their physical condition. Costumes, jackets, and other structured garments are typically three-dimensional, which makes them best suited for hanging storage. Do not hang items which are in poor condition, have heavy beading, or are weak in the shoulder areas. Flat storage places zero strain on objects, so this method is best for heavy or delicate garments. The weight of the garment can cause gravity-induced stress on the fabric, resulting in permanent distortion or rips. Some examples of garments you may want to store flat are long gowns or clothing with heavy fabrics or lots of embellishments. Bias-cut garments should also be stored flat, as the fabric is more elastic and can become permanently stretched out when hung. Fabrics also become more brittle and fragile as they age. For this reason, flat storage is best for heirloom pieces. For hanging storage, first lay your garment on a flat, clean surface. Take a padded hanger and gently insert it into the garment, opening any closures if needed. A padded hanger will help to retain the shape of the shoulders and reduce gravity-induced stress on the garment. To make your own padded hanger, wrap the prongs with several layers of tissue or some polyester batting covered with muslin fabric. When using skirt or pant hangers, pad in between the garment and the clamps of the hanger with a couple of layers of muslin fabric to prevent hard creases. Insert some crumpled up tissue into the garment's structural components to reduce strain caused by gravity. Next, place your hanged garment into a bag. When using zippered garment bags, gently ease the top of the garment into the bag and pull the top of the hanger through the hanger hole. Smooth out the fabric and place a layer of tissue in between the zipper and the fabric. This will reduce the chance of the fabric getting caught in the zipper. Slowly zip up the bag. Muslin garment bags or covers are an affordable option for garment storage and can even be made by the home sewer. Avoid using muslin fabric in contact with fragile silks or other textiles that are easily abraded. When using muslin bags without a front opening, Gather the bag on either side and insert the hanger through the hanger hole while the garment is laying flat. Gently lift the garment and hang on a closet hook or clothing rack. Gently slide the garment bag over the item, ensuring that it does not catch on any surface embellishments. Secure the bag using the ties as needed. Next, label your garment using acid-free paper and a pencil and tie to the hanger using cotton string. Make sure the tag is on the outside of the garment bag. This will reduce unnecessary handling of fragile pieces when searching for your items in storage. For flat storage of garments, start by lining your garment box with a layer of acid-free tissue. Cut a piece large enough to allow for extra paper to hang out of the box. Gently lift your garment over the tissue and align the bottom hem with the edge of the box. If the garment is longer than the box, you will need to fold it over itself. Since folds can cause permanent creasing in fragile garments, tuck some rolled up tissue paper along the fold to soften the crease. To prevent collapse of structured features during storage, place some crumpled tissue in necklines, shoulders, and bust lines. Fold sleeves inwards using the already existing shoulder seams as the creases to avoid making new lines in the garment. Place more crumpled up tissue under the fold to soften the crease. Place another layer of tissue on top of the entire padded garment and tuck the ends down into the box to enclose. 
When storing multiple garments in one box, place heavier items on the bottom and always place extra tissue in between each garment. Before closing your box, gently press everything down to expel extra air. Place the lid on the garment box and write a label on acid-free paper for the outside of the box. Punch a hole in the box and secure the label with a piece of cotton string. If you decide to store your hanging garments without covers, these measures will still help to slow down the process of deterioration. Store your garments in a low humidity setting, such as a cool, dry closet away from basements, attics, and heat sources. Select a location away from light sources. Even small amounts of light over time can cause irreversible fading and embrittlement of fabrics. For hanging storage, choose a closed cabinet, closet, or use a blackout curtain to prevent light from entering. Here are some extra tips to help protect your garments from damage during storage and use. Limit handling between wears to reduce flexing and strain causing physical damage. Do not use mothballs or cedar chests for garment storage. Moth deterrents and unsealed wood contain harmful chemicals and acids which can damage textiles. Cedar chests are generally ineffective against pests. Selecting a cool, dry storage location with adequate air circulation will help to prevent infestations along with regular cleaning and monitoring. During use, wear an undergarment such as a shirt or slip to create a barrier between your skin and the garment. The shirt or slip will absorb perspiration, salt, and oils from your skin, which can damage textiles. Avoid wearing sharp accessories that may snag the fabric of the garment. Be extra careful when eating or drinking to avoid spilling and creating difficult to remove stains. After completing these steps, you will be able to maintain a gentle and regular cleaning schedule, provide proper support and reduce physical strain, limit attractants for pests and insects, prevent mold growth, and provide a longer life for your special garments, which you can continue to enjoy. Be sure to check out the other installments of using and preserving your keepsakes Thank you for watching. 